What's cracking, Expressers? Welcome to Podcast X, episode 14 in season two. And we've decided that we're just going to bring you another one without a guest because we like it that way. It's nice and easy. So, Mr. James, how are you? Uh, I'm fine. And about the guest thing, it's we record at such wishy-washy times. Yeah. yeah. Trying to arrange a guest is just impossible. And Bunny's had some crazy hours at work recently. Indeed. So, yeah, there's there's that. And this is the first ever Podcast X recorded in the daytime. Yeah. <laughs> I'm terrified. And it's not the first one done in the morning, but it is the first one done in the morning when there's been sunlight. Yeah, precisely. Precisely. We do a lot in the morning, actually, technically. But yeah. uh, it's the first one where it's actually the real morning. Yeah. And I, I don't like it. I don't like this. It's mm. too light. My, my well, head hurts uh, a little oh, bit. Yeah. <laughs> I like it. I like it. You know. That's because you have no taste. <laughs> I have no taste. In times of day. Oh. Uh, I. Okay, topic one. <laughs> so I'm going to read you a news headline. And um, this is, I think, the most feel-good news headline ever. Awesome. So, so you ready? Of course. <clears throat> Suicide bomber kills himself and 21 students whilst making Iraqi militants propaganda video about the joys of suicide bombing. It's just perfect, isn't it? It's, it's just, you know, it's just brilliant. I, <laughs> it's just absolutely perfect. I, there's never been a better collection of words in a better sequence than that. <laughs> it's lovely. <laughs> yeah, you're, yeah, that's exactly it's like, it's right. Like song lyrics. It is. You know. They just fit together so exactly. well. This is and something they just which roll you would usually tongue. hear in an Adele song. It's beautiful. Yeah. This is like Skyfall all over again. Yeah, it's the kind of thing you sit there and you listen and you're like, wow, wow, that's that's, that's really, really good. good. Yeah, that, yeah that, that is awesome. That is yeah. that is very good. Uh, and uh, I'm not sure whether or not the, uh, the actual trainer, so the guy who blew them all up by accident, if he is my favorite person or least favorite person. I think he's both at the same time. He is technically both because him as a person is one of my least favorite people in the world, but him in his actions, he's one of my favorites. Exactly. And uh, yeah, that's, you know, hopefully that makes everybody listening feel good. It makes me feel good. <laughs> you know? And uh, okay, so this sounds very morbid that we're sitting here saying all of these awesome things about all of these people who have died. But no. what you have to understand is the whole reason that they did die is because they were doing stupid shit in an effort to kill other people. Exactly. So fuck them. And you there. remember what we talked about before, where the, you know about um, killing people. As long as you save more people than you kill, you've you've done a good thing. Yeah, so technically... Yeah, technically, this, this was a good killing. Yeah, technically, this guy has done a very <laughs> good thing. Yeah, that's uh, that's literally that. Now, I'm going to do something in the podcast which I've never done before, which is pour a drink. Oh, my God. What? what? This? Oh, my God. Did you set that up so it'd be perfect for the audio? No, I just have a really good mic. Now, <laughs> how clearly did that come through? Very clearly. You know, a lot of people probably going to think that's a sound I just put in. That's genuinely not. I just pour a drink. And look, you can hear me like... Hang on. Okay, this is getting a bit weird now. Stop this. I don't <laughs> like this. Oh, oh, stop it. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, it's uh, 11 a.m. and I'm drinking... But, no, not really. It's some um, and barley. <laughs> See, every so often, like every... Maybe once a week, I sit here thinking, we should do a drinking episode. <laughs> and then I realize, oh, wait. And James oh, doesn't wait. drink. <laughs> James does not drink. James couldn't drink. Or could, wait, could you drink? I don't, yeah, completely. Think about the laws in the UK home. Oh, like, yeah. Private play, 16 years old, parents Te or whatever yeah, in the house. It's, it, I, it, we could easily do it. We could, but we're not going. And that's the thing to our 70% American audience. <laughs> in the UK, if you're 16 and you have parents in the house, you can get shit faced. Yep. That must have just blown their mind. Legally. Legally. And Let's talk about this 21 bullshit in America. Let's. How does that make any sense? Um, well, you know, 
I don't know. You know I don't know. That's basically what I just said. I, I have no <laughs> idea. Yeah, because it's... Well, I mean, I understand it's it's safer. It, it's, you know, less people drinking is safer. But at the same time, that means that while you're at university or at college, as the Americans call it, you oh, can't drink. Oh, yeah. Mm. That's weird because at college in the UK, which is two years before US college, you can drink. <laughs> yeah. That, <laughs> yeah. It's terrifying. Wow. It? It's terrifying. And I don't understand it because... Yeah. I mean, all of the things I've seen about college have been pretty much 100% about drinking. So, th- is it just that they all break the law? Is that what's happening? Um, well, probably, I guess. Um, I don't know. Because if you're a senior, I think they call it in college or whatever, your final yep. year, two years, whatever, I think you'd be old enough then. I'm not sure. I think I might have just used a high school terminology for. A... I'm not sure. <laughs> no, there are there are college seniors, definitely. Um, yeah, I you guys, think... you have a messed up system. Yeah, you guys. We it have primary me. school, secondary school, college, and then university. Yeah, that's it. It it makes so much more sense. <gasps> but then we also have sixth form, which which is a type of college. It's not quite college, though. It's basically school. It's I'm not really school. No, it's. I'm I a... had to wear a uniform for my sixth form. Yeah, and if if I um wasn't moving to a, a different part of the world, then I would be going to a sixth form, and we'd have to wear. Admittedly, admittedly, it is a military sixth form. Oh, well, that's so... different. Of course you have to wear a uniform in a military six form. That's the most <laughs> ridiculous thing I've ever heard in my life. Yeah. Can't believe you even brought it up. Mm. <laughs> Fuck you. Okay. I, it, well, actually, to be fair, you just brought up a topic, and I'm pretty sure we've just said it's bullshit, and then, okay, that's that's the topic, sort of. Let's just move on. Um, <laughs> I feel like you should make a point if you have one, or... I no. I, well, I have a new topic. If you want to hear that one. Uh, yeah, sure. Go ahead. This technically came up as a would you rather, and the amounts were different, but I wanted to make it a little bit more difficult. So, would you rather be given three? Wait, wait, hold on. Three hundred thirty-three thousand three hundred thirty-three Great British pounds in cash, or be given a million pounds, Great British pounds, because I like saying that. A million Great British Pounds in Amazon vouchers. Which would you rather? Well, um... So... Ooh, so you can have a third of a million in actual... In physical Cash currency. Monies. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Or... Well, not money, as you've told me before. That's currency. True. Very true. Or um, in money. I don't know. Just it's something yeah. you can spend. Anything that's easy enough okay. to spend. So probably currency. Um, or oh, Amazon. Well, I can't buy a house on Amazon. True. But I could buy the equivalent amount of items off of Amazon and sell them for that, maybe. Again, true. And even though you might make a loss, so you might buy a million pounds worth of things on Amazon, you might not make a million pounds back in selling it all, but you could maybe make 700,000 back. Yeah. It's a big loss, but it's still more than that quarter of a uh, third of a million. Yeah, I mean, even if you sold everything for half price, exactly. you'd still make money. So I to guess be that honest, answers that. Yeah, I think that is the right way to go by. Now, the original question was, would you rather have... Uh, one hundred thousand pounds in cash or currency, or a million in Amazon vouchers, which to me was just it was too unrealistic. That's too um yeah that's a bit too lopsided. It is it is because I'm just of, gonna buy a million pounds worth of I don't know Amazon no not Amazon um microwaves or something really expensive. Microwaves. I can think of a couple Do more you know, things. I don't know more why I chose <laughs> microwaves. I don't know why I chose microwaves. Microwaves. I don't That's... know why I did that. 
Uh, I'm gonna I don't know. Maybe a, head some onto really Amazon big expect. See, yeah. see how much an, a microwave costs these yeah, days. Because I, do, I don't you, know what kind of microwaves you have in your house. Um, well, um, we have this one that's also an oven. Pretty cool. You, do you mean a microwave oven? No. <laughs> <laughs> It's, uh... No, not in this house, but at my dad's house, he has one which, um, it's a grill, all and right. a microwave, and an oven, all in the same box. Hmm, but, yeah, I think I have the same thing. It's technically just a microwave, though. Okay, then what you have is not the same thing. This thing no, it, this it thing is. Work, no, this thing literally is a fan oven, and a microwave, and a grill. But it looks like a microwave, right? No. Well, so it looks like an oven? No. I'm going to punch you in the face. <laughs> it's a microwave oven. It has to look like one of them. <laughs> what is no, one? it's some weird crossbreed thing. It's like a... If you take a microwave and make it two times larger and then add some ridiculously complex Star Trek Enterprise control panel on the right side... And then the door opens kind of like your, your boot on a car. Um, and inside you have different levels, you know, and that's it. But it can only do one It can only do one thing at a time. You can only grill, cook, or microwave. You can't do all yeah. at the same time. Also, I want you to know the most expensive microwave I've been able to find on the entire of Amazon is uh, £150. What about the most expensive fridge? But don't get me started on <laughs> fridges, James. Oh. You said microwave, that's what you meant. So you have to buy God knows how many. Type in what, microwave, microwave grill oven thing. I don't know. I was just spitballing. You don't hang on my every word, baby. Come on. Would you behave yourself, please? <laughs> and I'm, I'm not like you're talking to me like this when it's so close to Valentine's Day. Hmm. So, uh, on the subject of Valentine's Day. People will be listening to this on the same day, obviously today. I know. Mm. So, uh, Valentine's Day, Mr. James. Yes. Get up to, get up to much or, or, uh, No comment. No, no. Anyone? I know what you're anyone? trying to do, buddy. <laughs> no, you don't. <laughs> and you we just, no I know exactly. And we spoke about this before. I have no idea what you're talking about, me. Well, I do. So, I'm not going to be falling into your little ploy. I'm just asking about your, you know, how did Valentine's Day go? How was it, Mr. James? It was, uh, it, it, well, a lot of, a lot of it was just a lot of work. Um, this is completely taken out of context. <laughs> yeah, that's Because I was, so I was, I, I was, I was still at home and... We had a lot of weather problems. Ah. So, I see. there was a lot of the day I couldn't actually go anywhere because, you know, we were losing tiles and stuff. And the weather was just so atrocious. And were tiles the only thing you lost on Valentine's Day? Okay, and now... <laughs> I was going to say... <laughs> you missed that train. Um, All right. I'm very happy with that. <laughs> I'm, very, I'm very happy with what just happened. No, break. but seriously, yeah, how was it? How was it? Was it apart from the work? Was it good? Was it good? I'll be honest with you. Um, didn't actually get up too much yesterday. Um, I will be meeting up with a lady friend today. After this. Oh, really? That's weird. I didn't know that. Well, yeah. You know. So, uh, so yeah, um, this lady friend of yours. So, Scottish <laughs> independence. What opinions do we have? <laughs> what, what is this Japanese schoolgirl laugh? What is hey, that? Hey. I have never heard that before. That is extremely racist. That is not I am racist offended, at all. So, <laughs> how dare you? <laughs> so seriously, this... Uh, no, I'm, okay, I'll stop, I'll stop, I'll stop. Okay, so yeah, your Scottish independence, you'd like to talk about that? I would like to talk to, about um, Scottish independence. Sorry, I'm talking funny. It's because I've kind of got a cold. 
and it's uh, it's not very fun. So the Scottish independence now to anybody who's not UK audience or to even some people who are UK audience, this is going to mean nothing. Yeah, technically, yeah. Because um, yeah, it it's kind of been in the news, but not been in the news, but also then been in the news, but not been in. It's it's very complicated. Not some people want it in the news, and some people want it off the news completely. So, Scottish independence. Now, for people who don't know, the UK is built up of um, four different, uh, and, and this sounds like a Game of thrones term, but it's not. It's the proper one, I assure you. Realms. <laughs> this is this is this, this is the real thing. England, Scotland, Northern Ireland, and Wales. Now, we all all together. And this is something which uh, Americans do a lot. You refer to the UK as England a lot. Yeah. England is not technically a country. I was saying this the other day to my friends, and -hmm. they were literally looking at me like I was an idiot. What, when you said England wasn't a country? Yeah. You see, and this is why there are so many Scottish who are pissed off of us. Yeah. But, yeah. England is not technically a country. It's a nation or realm within the United Kingdom slash Great Britain. So, when <laughs> when quite often, yeah, I especially on painkiller or anything like that, I see them refer to the English health system and things like that. Even just them saying that, that annoys the Scottish. They don't like yeah. that. Because what you've just because the NHS is a UK thing. That's Scotland, Northern Ireland, Wales, and England. That's all of us. Okay, we are one country. We sound different and we all talk slightly differently, but we are the same country. We are no more different than different states are in the US. So, and 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 and, and this part is mainly just directed towards people, so you can kind of get it into context. What I'm trying to say. If I was to call people from um, California. Americans, but then call people from um, a different state, let's say Georgia or Texas, if I was then to call them, um, oh, I don't know, give, give me something to say. I don't... Texans? <laughs> yeah, if I called them Texans or something like that. And then you know, and I don't know, someone else Americans, exactly. but not the Texans, then yeah. Exactly, That that's, that is exactly what it is. So... Yeah, that they put it in yeah, context. It's, it's that's basically the kind people of situ- saying, "So oh, there's Scotland, which is just full of Scot- Scottish people." No, I don't know. I've lost. I don't even know what America actually thinks of the United Kingdom. I, I mean, they don't think there's Scottish people are English people, do they? No, they don't really believe that, do they? No, I don't think so. But they, they, they don't. See, a lot of them don't realize that Scotland is the same country as England. Yeah, I guess that that's true. They, a, a lot of them, from my experience, don't seem to understand that. They think Scotland's its own little place. And it might be very soon. But anyway, yeah. so the point I was trying... I straight off topic. The, the point I was trying to make about Scottish independence. So, on my father's side of the family, everybody's Scottish. You know, I'm in, in terms of the males in my family, I'm the first English-born of an incredibly long line of Scots. And with the exception of my father and my uncle... Everybody else on my dad's on my dad's side of the family still lives in Scotland, and they live in quite a rural part of Scotland. And they are screaming and banging their heads for this Scottish independence, and it's actually causing some friction in my family, especially um, on Facebook with some I know, I'll call them arguments, which I'm having with cousins and things like that. So, the Scottish Nationalist Party, they want. Sorry, the realm of Scotland to be its own independent country, blah, blah, blah. But the reasons they say why, and I'm going to... So, this is a big Facebook argument, which I had with um, my cousin. And um, <laughs> somehow, after about 200 comments, some some guy called Paul Middleton, who was a... Um, and let me just get this right. He is a professor at a university in Scotland. For some awesome. reason, he jumped in, <laughs> and he started giving his views. So, 
Um, this is what he said. The main benefit of independence is for the people of Scotland to set their own political agenda and priorities and manage their own resources. There's no need at all to talk down to the existing union or speak of divorce or separation. It's the choice of becoming a mature country, making mature and responsible decisions, whilst getting on well with our nearest neighbour and most significant trading partner. <clears throat> so there's a couple things in that. Yeah. One of the things is he's referred to Scotland's own resources. This annoys me. Because Scotland, you're, you're part of Great Britain. You're part of the UK. We are under the same government. I don't consider myself a different nationality to you because i'm <laughs> i'm not you have a british passport as well you know they are british yeah. i am british so when you refer to your own resources what do you mean your own resources you mean because you live in a different part of the uk you have claim to something and i don't what what do you mean that, that's just crap and when you say england this is this is one of the, one of the things he said in another comment. He said England has been taking our resources and keeping the Holy profit in shit. Westminster. One, that's complete bullshit. Really is. Okay, so yes, we have been using a lot of the oil and gas resources in Scotland just because that's where it happens to be. That is not us. That's not the English coming up to Scotland and stealing your resources. This isn't 1695. What are you talking <laughs> about? We are the same country and the profits the profits from this, yes, they get split out between the entire population of the UK. Now, if they're wondering why, why the oil comes from Scotland, but very little of the actual profit comes back to Scotland, let me break it down to you. Every taxpayer benefits equally in the whole of Great Britain from this oil and gas industry, which is based in Scotland. It just so happens that there's only about 5 million people in Scotland, where, as in the rest of the UK, there's 55 million Indeed. So, I'm sorry if somehow those 5 million people aren't getting totally the same amount of um, profit from this oil and gas as the rest of the 55. It's The profit goes proportionally to where the people are. And it just so happens that most of the people are south of the border. So, True, yeah. I, it was not even a border, it's, it's just a sign, but... <laughs> it's literally there's no border of any kind guys exactly you want to go to scotland you can just walk in you don't even know when it's happened mm -hmm. you're just on the road and then at some point you're in scotland yeah the accent changes that's all that happens yeah that's pretty, <laughs> pretty much it you have to stop every now and again to talk to someone to find out where you are exactly and all you do is you notice that you slowly understand what they're saying less and less and less as you go further north <laughs> Yeah, pretty Until much. Until you get to the north of Scotland and you're eventually like, oh, shit, is this still English? <laughs> what the hell did this guy just say to me? Yeah, so the, the, everybody benefits equally from this oil and gas profit. It just so happens that most of the people are south of the border. So, yes, south of the sign, I'm going to say now. So, yes, obviously a lot of that stays down here. Also, they talk about how Scotland's not happy with England, and this is what they keep saying. Scotland's not happy with England keeping its nuclear weapons in um, in naval base Clyde in Scotland. Now, yes, we have nuclear weapons. We are a nuclear state, the United Kingdom. <laughs> and yes, we had to find a suitable location to keep something so dangerous. Yeah. It just so happens that Scotland has a place where nobody lives, pretty much other than this small hippie base about two miles away from the oh, site shit. who keep pro protesting that we should get rid of all of our um, nuclear weapons. Um, pretty much nobody lives there. If there was a problem, they have the facilities, they have river and ocean, seawater, whatever, to, um, to be able to kind of drown the facility, basically. Mm. If something was to go wrong, you know, if you have some sort of Chernobyl meltdown, which you shouldn't have because we've moved on since then. But... They, they they keep saying the English are keeping their nuclear weapons in Scotland. If Scotland becomes its own independent mature nation, we will not have any nuclear weapons in our country at all, and we will feel safer because of it. What kind of fucked up logic is that? That's the most ridiculous. So basically what you're saying is, we don't want to have what a smart man would call these defensive objects in our, what they want to call a country as well. Because I, I assume if they got um, independence, they would then become a country. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so basically, they don't want any form of those defensive items in their new country. Yeah. Which means what? 
it means i mean obviously <laughs> it's not going to happen but if at some point in the future the rest of the uk went to war and for some reason scotland decided it wasn't going to be on our side what would what's going to happen i'm yeah. going to just walk up to your new country and just smack the shit out of you like it doesn't make any sense mm mm-hmm. mhm when you're a part of the UK, it means that you've got everything the UK has. I mean, it's good to have a, a community. It's good to have all of this here because it means you have access to more things. Yeah, and and you get... And here's the thing. With Scotland leaving the UK, and some of them try to deny this, but if, if you look at the facts, it's true. The Scottish debt will stay with RBS, the Royal Bank of Scotland. The Royal Bank of Scotland is mostly owned by a lot of the people in Westminster, which means that with them leaving, their debt stays with the UK. Yeah. I'm sorry, but you don't just get to pick and choose the bits you like from the UK and then fuck off with the good stuff. You don't get to do that. No, of course not. What kind of decision is that? You know, why do you consider yourself any different from me? This would be like Yorkshire just deciding, you know, fuck you guys. We can do better without you. <laughs> Because we're Yorkshireans and you're fucking English people and we don't like you. You've just decided that you're now a different race of people. I'm sorry, Scotland, but you're British. I'm British. You, you know, we. why do you have some sort of hatred for everybody south of the sign which seems to resonate from, what, maybe history that went on 300 years ago? Yeah, see, that's the thing. I was going to say, I'm not sitting here saying, you know what? Fuck these Welsh bastards. Let's just become England and forget the rest of the United Kingdom. But I guess it's kind of different because we pretty much created the United Kingdom. So I, I guess it is different because we caused it. But at the same time, I I didn't cause it. I didn't personally cause it. And I have no negative feelings towards Wales, Northern Ireland or Scotland. So why is it that Scotland decides that it hates us so much, even though in the present time, nothing's wrong? There's nothing going on that's actually immoral mm. or against the Scots. It doesn't make any sense. Exactly. So what Scotland, what the Scottish Nationalist Party actually say is they're going to leave the UK. They're going to keep the Queen. They're going to keep the Pound. They're going to keep the NHS. They're going to keep all public health sectors exactly the same as they were before. What? Nah, what, mate. Oh, I'm sorry. What have you, what have you changed? You just, you've, You've just made your own mini UK, you know? You've jumped out of, admittedly, a leaking ship into a lifeboat. Why would you do that? Hmm. You know, it, I'm sorry, but when you're in a lifeboat in rough seas, you're not going to do very well. I just don't get it. So, here's a. it's very hard to explain this kind of argument, but what we're trying to get at here is that for some reason, the Scottish have... Uh, well, not th this is a very small amount of them at the moment, but it seems to be growing. Um, there are Scottish people who have decided that they, they no longer want to be a part of the UK, they want to be different, and the BBC were doing interviews with people in Scotland. They were just going around the streets and asking people. And they asked this one lad, and he, he looks probably in mid-20s, about your age, Bonnie. And mm -hmm. they asked him, so do you think Scotland should be independent? He said yes. And they said, why do you think Scotland should be independent? And he goes, oh, I don't like the English. Why? That's, yeah, that's pretty much it. That's, I mean, why? in my opinion, that's the only reason why this is happening. Because some Scottish people don't like English people. Yeah. There's that's a, it. There's no sensible other option. The, the best way I think I can kind of put this together into a structured a sentence or, or whatever is um, to read this comment which I posted on a 200 comment argument with my uh, Scottish cousin so here it is yeah a very messy divorce no matter how it's done however my question to you is do you feel as though Scots are treated in any way or form differently than the rest of the UK the Scottish English border to me is no more than an old cobble wall not a divide between two different groups of people in essence, I'm confused as to why I, first English born in a long line of Scots, should find myself rejected along with the rest of the UK by my family's home place, Scotland. It seems to me that many Scots wish to be independent on some kind of emotional level or principle, and then wish to look for a practical justification of which to achieve this. Disband any patriotism for a moment and ask yourself if it's truly the practicalities and economics that attract you to an independent Scotland. 
If your answer is truly and wholeheartedly yes, then I wish you the best of luck and sincerely hope Scotland's future is a bright one without, with or without the UK. Yeah. Um, but yeah, th- th- that's that's my that's my opinion on it. And it's a good opinion to have. It very well, it's pretty much exactly exactly right. That's exactly what it is. It's right in everything you said, and it all makes sense. Yeah. But the thing I don't understand is I I don't see how not even if it came up tomorrow that England wanted to be separate from the remainders of the United Kingdom. I wouldn't want to do it. It doesn't make no, any me sense. Neither. I mean, there's so many benefits to being in a group like this, a group of people rather than a bunch of little individuals. Yeah. I mean, if you look at, for example, the Republic of Ireland has its own government. It's not part of the United Kingdom. Only Northern Ireland is part of the United Kingdom. Now, unemployment rate. <laughs> okay, this is what I'm going to talk about. It's quite a big problem in the Rep- Republic of Ireland at the moment. They got their own government, or they had their own government, to be fair. And then... Unemployment rate went up to 12.3%. Okay. Now, the reason for this, because I've, well, my family's from there, is because they put the unemployment payments or the dole or the job seekers allowance too high. So it's actually high enough now that you get paid more on job seekers allowance than you do in a minimum wage job. So people just <laughs> don't work. They just simply don't work. They're like, well, I'm getting paid more doing nothing than I would if I got that crappy job that they're telling me to get. So they just don't work. So that's why it went up to 12.3%. Currently in the UK, the unemployment rate is 7.1%. That's including Scotland. Now, it's half. It's it's essentially half. Not really, but it's it, essentially half. It's, it's now, pretty close to it, yeah. Like, that's just one thing that Ireland did wrong that meant that... It, it could, it definitely could have benefited from a UK style system, but obviously they're not part of the UK, so they don't, they don't get that option. Whereas Scotland wants to just create a lot of complications for themselves by, by becoming separate. And I know they say it's, it's everything's going to stay the same, the pounds, the NHS, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But first of all, the pounds that's not going to happen. It isn't going to happen. If you're getting independence, you will be losing the pounds. I've talked to so many yeah. economists and stuff about this and. You, you just won't be able to keep them. It doesn't make any sense. Then you move on to the NHS. Yeah, you could just essentially keep the NHS, but you'd also have to fund it. You'd have to fund it entirely. Yeah. So again, how are you going to do that? How are you going to set that up? I With mean, three and a half million taxpayers as opposed to the 60 million we have now. Exactly. Exactly. It's not like the NHS makes money, mate, because it doesn't. It loses money. So what are you, what's going to happen? How are you going to function? How is that going to going to actually be successful? Here we go again. <laughs> if you have you got a drink right in front of your microphone? No, I just hold it up in front of it when I do it. Oh, of course, of course. <laughs> it's not good enough to just pour a drink in. No, place. of course it's oh. not. Anyway, um, ranty type thing over. Oh, actually no, no, it's not. Um, <laughs> yes, sorry. <laughs> Um, a lot of people saying it'll be better for Scottish business, things like that. Um, it, it's really not going to be because I'll tell you what's going to happen. As soon as Scotland becomes independent, which by the way is looking like a 60% no, 40% yes. But if it was to happen, do you know the first thing that the UK is going to do? We're going to run your fucking business into the ground. And do you know how we're going to do it? All of a sudden, the UK government, and, and this is this is a hypothetical UK without Scotland, the UK is going to all of a sudden make benefits for new businesses and people, um, you know, in that kind of in that um, work sector. They're going to make things incredibly easier for them. You know, all of a sudden um, taxes will go down for certain work sectors and effectively people creating new businesses and new industries will find it a lot easier to get by. And Scotland will have no choice but to do the same because if not, they won't be competitive. And that's why the UK is going to do it first, is we're going to do it to eliminate any threat. And then Scotland's going to have to do it. Scotland's going to have to, all of a sudden, they're going to have to start giving more and more benefits to more people to try and stay competitive with a much larger UK. And we'll just keep doing that, keep doing that, keep doing that until Scotland's just no longer a competitor because they've driven themselves into debt and into the ground. And they no longer have the people or the business sector to actually dig themselves out of it. Guarantee now, you that will that will be what yeah. happens. It sounds harsh, but it's the way of the world. I mean, countries are like companies. You can't have a competitor right next to you. 
doing shit that you want to do. And I mean, Scotland's part of the UK, so we are happy to let them just flourish. But if you separate yourself from us, then it means that it, we're also going to be taking a blow as well as you. Yeah. And we need to recover from that blow, and we can recover from that blow. However, will you be able to recover from us <clears throat> recovering from that blow? That's the question. Yeah. Also, um, with Scotland having its own oil supply, you will actually have one of the largest oil supplies in the world because they will have some of the uh, oh, I forget, the Black Sea, I think it's called. I forget. It's the Black what, Sea. Sorry? I keep calling it the wrong thing. I think it's the Black Sea, though, right? <laughs> The Red Sea? No. <laughs> between <laughs> between Norway and um, Scotland. I, can't I, I, I honestly don't have any idea. I'm terrible with geography. Jesus, but, uh, I'm, it, I'm pretty it sure does ring a bell. Silver, it right? rings a bell. So sure it must be. Um, yeah, they, act they actually have one of the largest oil supplies into that. And they say they're going to become rich from it. Okay. First problem you got with that. When Scotland leaves the UK, guess what happens? The military stays in the UK. Yeah. And although many Scottish regiments might just go, do you know, fuck you, UK, we're going to go go fight for our own bloods. They might go back to Scotland, yes. But 80% of the Scottish people in the UK military have already said, if they do the split, they're not going to go over to Scotland. And the reason why, I'm sorry, but there's going to be a, there's going to be a small period where Scotland has no really good support system for its military. Yeah. It's, it's got to form one. From effectively nothing, you know. When you leave the UK, I guarantee you our 160 Eurofighter Typhoon fighter jets, our 114 Tornado um, fighter bombers, reconnaissance aircraft, Voyagers, two new super bloody carriers, our 65,000 ton aircraft um, carriers, you know, all the F-35Bs, they're going to stay with us. I guarantee you that. Mm -hmm. You know, there's no chance we're just giving you that stuff because they cost too much and we've we've waited too long to get them. You're of also going to lose a lot of industry because BAE, the um, a BAE, they build a lot of ships and submarines in Scotland um, for the British military. They're going to move south of the border because they need to. Of course. And with that, the thousands of people that work for them. And by the, Scott and the Americans listen to this probably don't understand. Oh, yeah, just a few thousand people. A few thousand people a lot in Scotland. They don't have this many people. Yeah. In addition to that, um, the last census taken in Scotland by the um, voters, 640,000 people of, of about 5 million said they would go south of the border if it became independent because they want to remain part of the UK. That's a lot. That's a, that's, what's that, like 12%? Yeah, that's, that's a lot. That's a big percentage of a country to say, if you do that, we're out, you know? It's yeah, one, that's it's, I mean, there's the people crazy. that don't want it to happen, and there's the people that don't want it to happen so much they say they will leave and <laughs> fuck off down to the UK <laughs> if they do. Literally leave this country. Yeah. If you, yeah, that's that's huge. Actually, I didn't. I have not heard that statistic before. But the fact that that many people are literally sure at this point that if it happens, they're going to be leaving the country. It cannot happen. It simply cannot happen. Yeah. And I guarantee the people who are going to be leaving the country aren't going to be the people who are sitting at home not working. Yeah. No, it's not. going to be valuable people. People yeah. who have made an educated decision and decided, no, no, this doesn't sound good. Let's move. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, let's, uh, let's move on from that to, uh, to another bunny topic, actually. I do have another bunny topic. Now, I've seen some YouTubers talk about this... Um, a lot, actually, a lot. And recently, I decided my opinions have changed. What are your opinions on actual advertisements in the online world? Um, my well, um, they're they're kind of essential, really, aren't they, for its growth? Yeah. Um, you know, without advertisements online, online businesses aren't really going to grow. Um. A lot of people complain about the amount of advertisement on YouTube. Well, and 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 a lot of people use AdBlock as well. You're not helping YouTube by doing that. Mm -hmm. You know, you're not helping the creators. That's for sure. And, oh yeah, definitely. Um, you know, obviously, obviously it affects um Express in some way, but it, it affects people a lot bigger than us as well, severely. And here's the thing: if you want, you know, your favorite YouTuber or whoever it may be, YouTube group. Um, to succeed and have a better, higher, higher quality product for you, 
which you're not paying for, then yes, you're going to have to sit through 30 seconds of advertisement. Yeah. But is I that don't... unreasonable? Yeah. This is nothing which you don't get on normal television. Yep, true. You, know, you watch 15 minutes of program and then you have three, four minutes of advertisement. If anything, the ratio on YouTube is probably not as bad. I ima- Yeah, I imagine it's if not the average, nearly If the bad. average video you watch is what, five, ten minutes and you have to watch, what, usually three seconds of advertisement? <laughs> yeah. You know, most of the time it's three seconds. You occasionally get the 30 second one. It's not a bad ratio. You know, compare it to your TV, you, it's doing pretty well. Yeah, it's in fact it's doing very well. And someone, well, a site that I will say is doing very, very well when it comes to advertisement is Amazon. I love a- Amazon's advertisements. I really do. I don't know what it is. The advertisements I think on it's... Amazon or their advertisements for themselves. Hmm. Both. Technically, okay. both. Whenever I've seen an Amazon advertisement outside of Amazon. It's always related to something I've bought previously. Mm-hmm. Now, is this cookies? Is that on the word I'm looking for? They use cookies to uh, not actual fucking baked goods, James. I can tell you're going down that route already. <laughs> no, it, I'm not. Um, as in like internet cookies. Yeah, as in so it, like they they can basically tell what I, you've bought in the past. And, I think and... they yeah, I think they do yeah. Mm-hmm. That I like. A lot of people don't like that. I, I actually love like that. I like that as well. I would say at least half of everything I bought on Amazon was because an advertisement came up and it happened to be exactly what I needed. Do you know what? You're completely right with that. There have been times where I've just been browsing YouTube and all of a sudden, because I was looking at mics recently, on the right-hand column of YouTube, it's showing me pop filters and mic stands. Exactly. And I'm like, hell, actually, that's pretty cool. I'm going to go look at this stuff now. Exactly. Even if I just look for something on Amazon and don't buy it, other variations of that item, sometimes better variations, will come up in advertisements outside of Amazon. Mm-hmm. And I'm sitting there thinking, holy shit, I didn't even know that this was a thing. Yeah, I'm buying this now. I do love Amazon. To me, Amazon's kind of the eBay killer. Even though they're two it, slightly oh yeah, different eBay's. things, I, I, I know, yeah. I trust Amazon more. Uh, 100%. 100%. eBay is fucked. Completely fucked. Oh. Oh. Be right, right back. back. No worries. So I don't know if this is going to actually be coming into the show, but I thought I'd just take this time to have a quick word with you guys. So, express. Sorry. Oh, sorry, what? What was that? Hey, do you know who this is? Sorry, you're going to have to say it again. Do you know who this is? Uh, uh, it says Nikki on my phone, so I assume that's you. Do you know which Nikki it is? Yes. Okay. Yes, I... You know which one it is? Um, yeah, it's you. It's you. <laughs> yeah, it's you. Really, did you just say that? <laughs> Why don't you ever Skype me in? <laughs> Why do I never... What's... Sorry? <laughs> Why do you never Skype me anymore? Um, <laughs> I don't... I, you know... I just, uh, <laughs> I haven't been on Skype very much recently, I guess. Mm-hmm. Mm. <laughs> All right, then. I, I just want to wish you happy Valentine's Day. Okay, thank you, Nikki. Um, I, I do, you're yeah. South African, Nikki, right? I do remember. Aww. Yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> okay. All right, then. All right. All right, then. Okay, goodbye. <laughs> have, a, have a happy week. Oh, what just oh. happened? Uh, what just happened? <laughs> oh, okay. Um, what the hell was that? That was a phone call, Bunny. Oh, yeah. Thank you, Mr. <laughs> James. Thanks so much for clearing that up for me. I, uh, I just, um, you, you probably heard my phone start ringing, and I saw who it was, and I thought I'll just do this conversation on the podcast. Okay, and uh, I don't know that many Nickies. How many Nickies do you know? Uh, at least one, apparently. At least one. At least one. Why don't you Skype her anymore, James? You bastard. <laughs> How clearly can you hear it? I can hear everything. I can hear absolutely everything. And it was joke. <laughs> Um, Wow, that was really bad because I genuinely couldn't remember who it was. 
dear. What I don't understand is um, sh- she's calling you to ask you why you don't Skype her anymore. <laughs> so, I see we. <laughs> yeah. Why? Why didn't? She, hmm, okay. No, I, I, I don't understand. I don't. I don't get it. So Skype. So basically. The reason she's talking about Skype rather than the phone calls is because Skype has something that phone calls don't have. What could that be? Mm. What could that be? What does Skype have? It's, oh, I know where you're going with this and stop. What does stop it. it. Stop, it. stop it. Stop it. I know where you're going with this. I know exactly where you're going have. with this. And if and if viewers haven't got where he's going with this, then consider yourself lucky. I don't understand what it could possibly be missing. I You're talking about the video aspect. Oh, right? video that's oh, it. Video yeah. aspect. Yeah. Oh. Mm-hmm. oh, that was it. That was it. Now why would she be angry for not being able to see you on video? Why would that be? Would you rather? Okay. So uh 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 uh, uh. <laughs> not about that. Um Oh, I know. I need the toilet. I'll be right back. Okay, you be back. I'll just talk away, mate. I don't mind. Is he gone? He's gone. Okay, well, Mr. James has actually come on the video in this conversation for about three seconds before we started properly recording. And I'll be honest, the closest thing I can think of comparing it to was Hugh Hefner. Hugh Hefner. It was kind of like a dressing gown thing, open, chilling. His hair looked perfect, even though he, I assume he had just woken up. So I think this uh, this individual that we just spoke to, this Nikki South African individual, misses that. She misses the hef. She wants the hef back in her life. So yeah, I, I, I'm pretty sure that's exactly what's going on. Why else would you call someone to to complain about them not hitting you up on Skype? So you heard it here first, guys. James shows pictures of his knobs to minors. Oh, I really thought he was going to be listening to that. I guess not. Does he actually just bounce? That's not cool. I know. I'm, fuck James. Fuck James. Fuck him. But I'm not going to let this go. There's no way in hell I'm going to be letting this go. Ah. So, yeah, I'll just enjoy my coffee while we wait. Mm. So when she called, she wished him a happy Valentine's Day. That, that's the kind of thing you, you wish to people who, who you're in a relationship with. So it's kind of weird. So either she's a bit mental and a bit uh, clingy, I want to say. Either she's a bit clingy and she's wishing him... Uh, happy Valentine's Day when he doesn't really know who the hell she is properly, at least. Um, or they're closer than James is making out. Or were at one point closer than James is making out. Which one could it be? And I'll be honest, James made a a, a very bad tactical error there by saying, it's uh, It's you. Oh, I know which Nikki it is. It's you. Because that's you, just a quick tip. Never do that. Never. You need to play it off very well. Just be like, well, what do you mean which Nikki? I only know one Nikki. Nikki, it's you. It's Nikki. I know who you are. Like, come on. And then the fact that she went, aww, when he said South African is also pretty weird. That was a very strange conversation. I have no idea. No idea. Because that would mean... That would mean she was actually impressed that he remembered her existence. Okay. Now I am rather confused. What the fuck are you talking about? (laughs) I just came back, and I thought I'd be quiet for a couple of seconds, and all I heard you say is... She was impressed that I remembered her name. I'm very confused. Yeah, that's pretty much exactly what I said. Okay. You know I'm going to hear everything you said eventually anyway. Yeah, it wasn't a fucking secret, mate. I was just discussing the psychology behind that conversation you just had. (laughs) I was trying to work out how exactly you know this female. Uh Uh-huh. And I... 
I don't know. I don't. I have uh, a few theories. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. And I've told everyone who's watching all of them. So what's what's your theory? Well, first of all, there's the obvious one. Mm -hmm. The clear cut, definite reason why you two Skype each other. Right. There's that one. Then we move on to her being closer than I originally thought to you because of the fact that she wished you a Valentine's Day. Now, it's either because she's closer to you than I originally anticipated or because she's a bit mental. <laughs> okay, it's one of those two. And then because she was like, oh, Oh, when you actually realized, well, she realized that you knew who she was, that then went in the opposite direction. I was thinking, well, maybe she doesn't know him that well, or she did know him, but <laughs> back in the day. <laughs> so, hmm. I think you need to shed some light on this situation, Mr. James. No, I don't think I do. In that case, everyone's just going to assume that you send pictures of your penis to underage girls. <laughs> She's older. <dude. laughs> okay. <laughs> Doesn't matter. Underage. For, for something. Um, no. She's underage for an elderly person's insurance plan. Well, yeah, but... <laughs> well, then, she's underage, mate. That's... Um, right, okay. I think she's turning 18 soon. I'm not sure. Oh, she's not even 18 yet. Oh, God. <laughs> Worse than I thought. Oh, but nor am I, so... It's fine. But, anyway, we <laughs> shall move on to... Oh. What are you sniggering about? Who the fuck is Ah, it? Bunny, this is about the time you need to make a call, is it not? It is, actually. It is. But not this fucking call. Hmm. For those of you that don't know, well, for all of you, someone's been calling me all damn day, and I have no idea who it is. <laughs> the same number it... Hold on a fucking... <laughs> Wait just a minute. What are you laughing about? Nothing. Are you calling me? Is this you? No. Oh my god, James, if this is you. <laughs> is this you? I I'm... don't know what you're talking about, buddy. Oh my god, this is going to be you, isn't it? <laughs> but it... It can't be your <laughs> number, though. That's the thing. It can't be your number. <laughs> Does it, is it a home phone number? No. <laughs> okay, so it's not you. Okay, I understand. <laughs> it's not me. You're an idiot. I hate you so much. <laughs> Why are you me? Uh, fuck's sake. Right. Do you want to make said call now? I will. I will. And I'll be back in around... Five to twenty minutes. Five to well, five to five to an hour and twenty minutes. Uh, what? What? I um, hmm. maybe two hours. Mm. I'm joking, my friend. I'll be five minutes. Five okay. minutes. I'll stop Would recording, like to... and we'll be back. Um, uh, what's going to seem like no time at all to you guys? Yeah, it's going to be like magic. Yep. And we're back. All right, we are back, ladies and gentlemen. Indeed. Ooh, I've had a shower since we've gone. Bunny has gone and um, I'm not really sure what he's done. I made a phone call and made a coffee. You know exactly what I've done. There we go. And try and accuse me of anything, <laughs> Mr. James. <laughs> anyway, so, um, do you have a topic? I do. Well, for, well it's kind of a, a subtopic of what just happened. Do you think we look a bit like dickheads, Mr. James? <laughs> <laughs> Because what? we've had two conversations with girls over the phone on this podcast, both of them, where the main subject was about us not talking to them anymore. Oh, oh, um, uh, no, no. Oh. I'll be the first to say that's not a common occurrence for me. That was a one-off. It was most definitely a one-off. Okay, all right. But with James, I know it happens every day because it does you know, not happen. There's a lot day. of stuff you guys don't get to see because it's not recorded. But yeah, every it single does day, not happen every day, every single day, no. without fail. There's a different woman <laughs> calling up saying, "James, why haven't you sent me any dick pics?" In oh, the last okay. Weeks? Well, do you know what? It's it's not that's not entirely true. 
I like the use of the word entirely in that. <laughs> Meaning yeah. it's at least partially uh, you true. Hang Which my part, every word though? too much. Um, <sighs> look, I'll, it doesn't happen that often. It really, it really doesn't. I'll be honest. The same as you. Like it's a pretty rare thing. Yeah, and yet both of those conversations were captured. So, do you think we look a bit like dickheads? I think we might. Um, maybe a little bit, but I please think... no. Um. Actually, no, I'm not going to try and... Do you know what the shit they've heard about me, to be fair? <laughs> That's a good point, actually. You know, they've heard stories of me having a fight with a black guy and then slamming his head into a... a... I'll be honest, if they haven't switched it off by now, then I'm good. Yeah, I think I think you've made it. I you think know. you have made it. Yeah, exactly. If you are... Uh... If I didn't lose them by the end of the first series, then I think they're here to stay, hopefully. <laughs> That? But yeah, yeah, that's that's not how we are, people. That's not actually how we are. We're not like running around just breaking girls' hearts. In no. fact, that's pretty much the opposite of what I try to achieve. But no, break it his does. Uh, it does. I'm not gonna lie. It does seem that way. Hopefully, we'll be able to redeem ourselves with yeah. uh, mm -hmm. with all of this. Definitely. I mean, I could always call her back, which would probably be the nice thing to do. <clears throat> you mean on the podcast? Yeah. Really. I could do. Call her back and do what? Just chat. I <laughs> uh, I guess you know uh, you seem to be pretty intrigued by this. Uh, I am pretty intrigued, but I'm more intrigued about something else. Okay. Something something else. I don't want to give too much away. Else would be. Oh, I have no idea. No idea. Um. Hmm. Have I missed something? Um, Does anybody know where he's going out here? Or You may have missed something at the moment, but you won't miss something in a second. I got a present for you. Okay. Hello? <laughs> Mr. Rito, what's going on? Not so much, man. Yourself? Yeah, not too much. One quick thing. I'm recording Podcast X as we speak, and you are live on the show. What do you think of James? <laughs> Mr. James. Mr. James, you know, James, oh, R.I.P. Uh, Wings. Really? Yeah. Oh, what? You mean from what you've told me about him? Yeah, and from what you've seen on the show, etc., etc. Oh, no. Oh, it seems like a right prick. <laughs> 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 Anything else? What, what about his looks? What, what, what's wrong with the way he looks? Well, I don't know. I, I don't think I've ever seen. Actually, I saw that uh, YouTube video he put out. It's ugly, gangly motherfucker. <laughs> 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 perfect. Oh. That is absolutely perfect. We're gonna have to get you on for a, a full show, Mr. Rito, at some point, and just no, have this no, not anymore. I'm afraid. Straight. You up for that, Rito? Yeah, no worries, man. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. All right, I'm oh, he you thinks he's coming on now, does he? Uh, when we finish recording, my friend, and then we'll arrange something, all right? All right, cool, man. All right, bro. Peace. Peace. Yeah, that's, that's all I wanted to do, really. You know, I don't like him. I don't like him. <laughs> <laughs> There's something you know. about him. What is it? What do you, what do you think? Uh, you know... Is it hard to put your finger on, or...? I... <laughs> Ah, or in your case, is it hard to put your missed, finger in? Missed, missed, uh, you are a horrible, <laughs> horrible <laughs> person. I'm so <laughs> I am so happy. This is like the best podcast ever. I just want to put it out there. The only thing that would make this better is if you accidentally slapped yourself in the face or something. That would just uh, <laughs> it'd be the icing on the cake. Uh, <laughs> well, I do have a good would you rather. All right, let's hear it. Would you rather... Eat somebody else's poo, or your own semen. Semen. <laughs> easy. <laughs> easy. What are you on about? <laughs> really? That easy of an answer? Are you for real? Is that an actual honest question? <laughs> yeah. Of course. Of course. Really? Definitely. Oh, What's God. wrong with you? I. Wow. Are you for real? What? I. Don't think I could do that. Doesn't make a difference, man. I ain't eating someone else's shit. That's a <laughs> show. <clears throat> <clears throat> wow. Well, um, 
Hey, right. look, look. I look. didn't. I thought there was going to be some thinking time to that question. No, honest. none whatsoever. I mean, <laughs> ladies do it all the time. <clears throat> oh, okay. Ladies do it all the time. And hey, if I can't love myself in the same way, who am I? You know, I can't expect other people to do it and me not do it. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we just have two different mindsets, but I, no, I couldn't bring myself to do the latter. So you would eat someone else's shit. Yeah, you I would wish. actually eat someone else's. It's gonna shit. be in proportion, isn't it? So, yeah, I would, because I couldn't possibly bring myself to do the um, <laughs> the second one. Oh, oh, that's just disgusting, James. <laughs> How could you? <laughs> How could I? What? You're the one who's gonna eat his own semen? Yeah, easy. <laughs> and how am I at fault here? Because easy come, easy oh, go. Wow. Well, Whereas you are just going to eat someone's shit. That's it. <laughs> as far as I'm concerned, it's it's a question. It's basically the exact same question as would you rather eat your own shit or someone else's shit? No. That's essentially what it no. is to me. Because they're both equally disgusting, but one's from me, one's from something else. But. <laughs> Okay, would you rather... Okay, right. Then. How much experience <laughs> with cows have you had? The actual animal. Enough. Enough experience. See, no cow poo. Yes, of course. Cow poo or human poo? Cow poo, every time. You'd eat cow poo? Of course, every time. <laughs> <laughs> what every cows have you had experience with exactly? I'm Irish, mate. The I'm Irish like, cows don't shit gold. What? No, <laughs> what possibly? Could you see in them? It's not like I'm sitting here going, oh, I'll have the cow shit because that looks great. It looks lovely. It looks <clears> so <throat> tasty. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying I'd rather eat cow poo than human poo. That's so fucked up. You'd rather eat human, human poo? Yeah. Have you seen cow poo? Doesn't matter what it looks like, mate. It, it, what matters is what it's made up of. What's cow poo made up of? Grass. It's human poo made up of. <laughs> well, you don't really know, do you? Exactly. Why risk it? <coughs> I'll eat that grassy poo all day. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that ooh, sounded like ooh. a physical recoil. Yeah, it was. Okay. Let me try and break this down to people if you haven't had much experience with cow poo. Cow poo? in my experience, has just always been the closest thing to diarrhea. Yeah, always. Yeah. Always. Much. Uh, please have another topic. Please. So it's the consistency that you're worried about. <laughs> I'd have to eat it with a spoon, man. <laughs> oh, okay. I didn't, I didn't like, I'm not going to lie. It's I didn't like, like that. It's, like, like, that. it's like soup, man. Yeah, you have to slap this shit, shit up. Soup. <laughs> All soup tastes like shit anyway. I mean, it's basically the same thing, right? You're gonna have to slap it. You're gonna have to. You got no choice. Hey, I'll happily. I'll slap it away. You, 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 you want to eat something that is a waste product from humans? I don't want to. I just yeah, don't do. want to do you the other to. one even more. You want to more than anything? No, you I don't. To. Oh, you, do. you are nasty. Think oh. about it. The stuff that people eat these days is already waste. Some chemical shit oh. gonna kill you. Oh. If your body decided, oh wait, this is the stuff that we definitely don't want to ingest, why would you then ingest it? You definitely don't want to ingest either. One is just grass. It's not Even just if grass. Ate, if you ate the waste from grass for the rest of your life, it, nothing bad would happen. The waste from grass is just grass. Do you, do you know why humans don't eat grass, Bunny? I don't give a shit. It's not <laughs> like I'm going to have to live off of this cow poo. I just have to eat it once. It's the, it's the texture, and I know where it comes from, and they're just the nastiest animal ever. I hate cows. What? Can do it. How could you possibly have any strong negative feelings towards a cow? Because they are the... Filthiest fucking animal in the world. People have heard this story before. I did work experience on a farm, on a dairy farm. Now, when we milk the cows, their asses are faced inwards, 
and they just heavy rain shit wherever they want. They don't care, you know. They will be they laying down and they will go for cows. a shit. <laughs> they are cows. <laughs> yes, but a, they will be laid down and they will shit where they lie. They don't care. They will shit right there and right then. What kind of what kind of toilet etiquette are you expecting from a cow? I want them to get up and go shit and then get up and walk away from it and then sit back. It's even dogs know this. Dogs do this. Cats do this. Fucking deer do this. It's a cow, mate. <laughs> and uh, deer don't do it, mother. I'm telling you, this nearly put me off of beef. This experience with cows. See, that's, Being shit I... on by a cow is just... Ugh. All right, here's a question. Would you rather eat the cow or eat the shit? <laughs> Easily eat the cow. That's a, that's a stupid question. You sure? Because every other answer you've had has been ridiculous. <laughs> no, it, it, no. No. Okay. I'm so gonna it's like the fridge thing. Down. You're just being unreasonable. I don't need to break this down any more than it already is. You would choose to <laughs> this eat is like human the fridge shit thing, over man. cow you're, shit. You're just being that's unreasonable. That's all I need to say. You're just being unreasonable. <laughs> <laughs> I know what I'm being, my friend. I know exactly what I'm being. Well then, do you have another topic? I do. Um, okay. I would like to know what your management style is. Since you're in a, a managerial role, what is your management style? How do you act towards the people who are underneath you? Not physically, of course. <laughs> so, to, to the people... Okay. Um... So I'm, I'm not trying to put anybody down here, but so it's a, uh, the, the people like the directors and things like that. What? I'm talking about... No, 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 no. The, the, the directors aren't beneath us, my friend. That's... How dare you? How dare you? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm talking about um, military-wise. Ah, okay. Um, so for, for people who don't know, I'm... Um, so I, th I think the US has its equivalent of the Air Training Corps. Um, you probably call it U.S. Air Force cadets, maybe I'm not sure, something like that. Basically, it's a, it's a military for youth organization for people up to about the age of 20-ish. Um, mm -hmm. So before they actually join the real military, they they can kind of you know they can live that lifestyle whilst in education. Uh, and in the Air Training Corps, I am a sergeant. So a sergeant is um, a senior non-commissioned officer role, which in my squadron of 75 people puts me in the top five. So, God damn. Yeah. Um, you know, like tied fourth with another guy, effectively. So, h how do I go about doing things, do you mean? Yeah, I mean, because everyone has their own management style, even if they don't realize it. Like, mm. some managers are just nice all the time. Some are just dickheads all the time. Some are a mix of both. I mean, it just depends. Some people use Probably. motivational speeches. Some people use... Some other stuff, I don't know. Probably Threats of violence. Yeah. I try not to do that last one. But, um... <laughs> uh, so... Probably a mix of, of both. <laughs> um, there are times when you need to be a different kind of manager. It depends where you are and who you're dealing with. Yeah. So... On camps, when we're on act, you know, on active military bases. So mm -hmm. the the example I have is Army Base Napier. Okay. Whilst we were there, there were special forces there on the same base. There were Royal Marines there, and there were the regular ter territorial army. Um. Now, one of the days I remember, we were marching up to the mess hall, and one of our cadets, um, he, he's just a normal cadet, so I'm I'm higher than him in rank, and I was taking the flight. I can't remember what it was he was doing, but I think he was saying things which perhaps regular, um, you know, servicemen and women don't want to hear. Um, it's it's hard to say, but I don't want to say it. But he he was talking about how they made this bit of a, how the Royal Marines made a bit of a daft mistake in one of their recent ops, and they lost a couple men from it. Oh my days! And he was who, talking. Who was saying this? <clears throat> it was just just a kid. It was a fourteen, no, not 14, 15, 16 shit. year old lad. Okay. <clears throat> and uh, I could see that we were just about just about to march past a um a flight of Royal Marines. And he didn't stop talking. Then that that there is the situation in my head that called for okay, I need to get him to stop 
right there and then. I can't just gradually turn around and be like, uh, mate, can you just stop? Because it, it would have, I would have wasted time and the wrong people would have heard stuff, which I think would be inappropriate conversation. Yeah. You know, because you don't know where these guys have just been. You know, you don't know if they've just come back from that area, if they knew people on that op. Of course, yeah, even if they didn't, it's like a brotherhood. Like, exactly. It, you never want to hear about your own people dying. Like, it's just... Exactly. Yeah, oh, my God. And he was And he was getting so gruesome with it, he was just talking to another connect, and he was talking about how um, they got some footage from it on the front of one of their um, Mastiffs, or um, not Mastiffs, like the, the the small off-road equivalent. Yeah. And how they got footage of his limbs flying, and oh I had to God. stop him. And when I confronted him about it, he seemed confused about why I was asking him not to talk about it. He was saying, I'm just talking about it. And it, it started off pretty calmly, I'll be honest. I, I just, um, you know, I shouted back immediately to get him to stop talking. And obviously he stopped at the time I was a corporal. So he said, yes, corporal. And I said, fall out. And he went off, stood to the side and I went and spoke to him. And he seemed confused as to why I said to him, it's not appropriate to talk about these things on an active, you know, on an, on an active military base, especially when the regiment you're talking about is there. And he seemed confused, and he uh, he wasn't from my squadron, he was from another squadron, and he, he got quite arsy with me. And he started oh. to argue with me about it, and, and, and the way it seemed to me, at least, was him, he was basically saying to me that, no, you don't get to tell me what I can and can't talk about, which is fair enough in most examples, but yeah, not this example. Yeah, in most examples. This, but... is, this is a time when it's completely inappropriate. Mm-hmm. And I may have slightly lost it there because I I just, um, some of the stuff he was saying, which I, I won't even repeat now, I, I felt was very disrespectful, especially in the scenario we were in. So um, I, I took him to one of the barracks whilst everybody was eating. He didn't get to eat um, that morning. And <laughs> I basically sat him down and I, I gave him a pen and paper in the barracks whilst everybody was eating and left him there for about 20 minutes and he I made him write out an apology. I didn't make I didn't make him give it to them. I just made him write out an apology and try and justify why what he was saying would be inappropriate because I wanted him to understand why you can't just say something like that. You know, it's all well and good making sure they don't do it and punishing somebody for it, but there's also a certain element of I want him to know why I think he can't do that and why it's inappropriate to say those things. Yeah. As true as some of the things he was saying may have been, you just don't say it. And I've been very, very vague with what I've said, and and um, and, and I have my reasons for that. But for twenty minutes, he was there, sat in silence, writing out why he did this thing, and then after that, he went and um, got on with his duties, which is I can't remember. It was just cleaning the hall, I think. I mean, that's so, that's a very good and, example. And here's the thing, because after I did that, I was only a corporal at the time, a sergeant came up to me, and he said to me that what I did was um, was too too nice. You know, oh, I, was, my I was too lax on him. And might because I, I'd seen the, the initial argument I'd had with him, so I was like, <laughs> it really wasn't. Yeah. Um. So, yeah. That's that's ridiculous. There's, though. That's I mean that's completely out of line. That's just an example that always comes into my mind because it's it's very hard to explain to somebody why what he was doing was completely outrageous and inappropriate. But, um, yeah, I thought it was pretty clear. I, personally, I thought it was it was very clear exactly oh, okay. well, what good, he was doing good. wrong. Um, yeah, and I, uh, that was you know, an example. So you were, you kind of adapt to a bit of both. Yeah, pretty much, I, I think. Well, I, pro- I pretty much know by now that that's the exact approach you need to take. 100%. I mean, it's scientifically proven to be the exact approach you need to take. For example, um, the reason I was thinking about this, because I saw an experiment with puppies, newborn puppies, right? Where the owners gave them a mix, 50-50 mix of positive and negative energy. And the puppies, during these positive periods, were more, hmm, let me see, more emotionally attached to the owners than they were when they were just constantly nice to the puppies. Uh. It's interested me. But then I started thinking a bit more. We just got a new manager where I work. Now, for those of you that don't know, I work in a phone shop. I'm not going to say which phone shop because I'm pretty sure I'm not allowed to say which phone shop. But I work in a phone shop. We got a new manager a couple of months ago. 
and things changed. The amount of uh, sales we were doing, for example, um, uh, when we were following policies, everything like that completely changed. We went sky high with sales. We followed every policy to the letter, whereas previously it was a lot more flexible, a lot more chilled out. And I noticed that this manager of ours followed the exact same pattern. If you did something wrong, he will fuck you up big time. Big time. Whereas if you're doing your job correctly, he will sit there and just mess around with you all day. And it makes you want to achieve that. It makes you want to push for acceptance with this manager because it feels like you've earned it. Now, I have the exact same management style. I tried the whole nice management style before. It doesn't work. It just simply does not work. People try to walk all over you. They don't listen to you. You know, they, they always have something to say when you're asking them to do something. And then if you're the nice manager, you have to basically talk people into doing what you're saying, even though you're a manager. This guy doesn't have to talk anyone to doing shit. He says something, it gets done immediately. Immediately. Yeah. There's no ifs, there's no buts, there's no fucking coconuts. Yeah, and um, like you say, that is the correct approach to take. Um, So if if people think back to when they were in school, think back and try and remember who your favourite teacher was. Now... I bet I can probably describe your favorite teacher without you um, telling me anything. So, and, and and I may be wrong, but I think for 99% yeah, of people, here, this here is Here we true. go. You try it on me. Go ahead. Was your favorite teacher very strict to those who didn't do their work, yet incredibly nice and funny and relatable to those who did do their work? And he would find a way to incorporate um, a kind of entertainment factor into his lesson. So you would turn up to a lesson... You would pretty much look forward to it, and people didn't talk very much. People mostly just sat there and wanted to hear to wanted to hear what he was going to say because what he was going to say would be, I don't know, seventy, eighty percent work, and then twenty to thirty percent him just goofing about, you know, in in that ratio. And because he had that kind of entertainment factor to his lessons, the reason people listened is because they wanted to listen because half the stuff he said was educational which wasn't necessarily the part people wanted to hear, but people then retain that information because the lesson was entertaining. Is yeah, that... that's pretty much exactly right. Yeah, and, and I think that's right for most people. You know, when I yeah. think back, in my favourite teachers, they were always... Uh, we had one. He, uh, he walked around the classroom playing guitar, singing songs about it, and he'd just throw people's names in from around the class and add it into this song and start singing random shit about it. And when people got a question wrong, he'd tell them in song, things like that. And <laughs> it was incredible because you felt like the whole lesson, you weren't doing work. You felt like the whole lesson was just goofing about. But then you look back through your book and you're like, holy shit, I actually did quite a lot of stuff there. And I remember everything because it kind of interested me because he made it interesting. You know, I always find that people remember things which they're interested in. If you're not interested, you turn up, you switch off, you forget about it. Definitely. In fact, it's amazing how ac- you were a lot more accurate then than I thought you were going to be. There's only one thing I think you, you didn't particularly touch on, which is the whole... I don't know if this is the same with you, but these type of teachers, for example, tend to also, when it comes to punishing people make it a kind of game, a weird game that the the rest of the class gets to see and experience. They don't just tell you off by saying you know, you're fucking Do you stupid know what? detention. Um, yeah, I can think of an example. So um, there was a, a geography teacher I had and when people got stuff right, he would go and oh, I'd go, oh, you know, I'd just give an example. He'd say, Jacobs, you're a god. Everybody look at Jacobs. Jacobs is the man. He knows that you're talking about social, economic and environmental effects when it comes to these sort of disasters. And then when somebody gets a question wrong, they say, oh, you know, when you've got one bag in the class and somebody else did something wrong, you say, oh, you're pulling a Michael. You're pulling a Michael. <laughs> don't pull a Michael. Look, Michael sat right over there looking at his puppy eyes. Don't pull a Michael. You're not going to do it, are you? No, I'm sorry, sir. All right, good. Go back to where you are. Yeah. That's yeah. That's pretty pretty much exactly what's... Yeah, that's what I was, I was thinking as well. We had two teachers, actually, that were exactly like that. One of them is the head teacher now at the school. Wow. And I remember one story where I wasn't in the class, but um, some person was talking. So the teacher opens his drawer, pulls out a hammer, jumps on his desk, (laughs) then jumps over to the students' desks, which are all connected, runs across the tables, knocking all of these people's shit off, tells the boy (laughs) 
to put his hands on the table <laughs> and then just launches the hammer directly between his two hands and it just <laughs> smacks the shit out of the table and basically goes, <laughs> you're going to stop talking now. And then just walks back <laughs> across the tables and takes his That seat. is brilliant. Wow. Yeah. But this guy was the same. He would mess around during the lessons for about, like you said, 20% of the time, 80% you'd be learning. And if someone did something wrong, it was entertaining the way that he punished them, which means that if you weren't the one getting punished, you were very entertained. If you were the one getting punished, you wanted to make sure that you weren't getting punished again from that point on. Yeah. And I also have a thing about um, the way that, how I try to punish people, but also the way that I think people should be punished. Now, when people get punished in, in you know, this can be anything, a military environment, a school environment, whatever, I think it's very important, and bear with me on this, it's very important for them to not feel like they've lost now, yeah. let me explain what I mean. When <sighs> it's very hard to say. Imagine you're in a fight, you're in a public fight, and the other guy beats the crap out of you. Now everybody's seen in front of everybody that you just got beat up by this guy, and you feel like you're now worthless, and um, and that you know you you there's no way that you could ever be nice to this person or redeem yourself because then you're worried that other people are going to view you as you've given in. Yeah. If that's the way you're going to punish people, and I don't mean physically beating them up, I mean you're going to, you're going to, you know, right in front of everybody, you're going to do it so badly that they feel like there's no way they can redeem themselves, and now that's it. You've just ruined any possible relationship between those two people. You've now made it so you've got, from now on, you, you're just going to have a bad relationship because there's no way, there's no turning back from that event. That's yeah. when you've crossed the line. If you go right up to that line where you've punished them in front of people, but you've, you've made it clear so, you know, you haven't just completely annihilated this person, you know? Yeah. You haven't punished them so bad that everybody's like, oh, man, he, he can never come back here again because that guy's just going to mess him up. If you've gone to that line and you've crossed it, then you've gone too far. But if you go right up to that line where you punish somebody to the point where they still feel like they haven't lost, they feel like they've made a mistake, not like they've permanently ruined something, then you're doing yeah. it right. Yeah. People have got to feel like that they can they can get back from that line because once they've gone over it, it's a, it's a pit. And I've had this before with teachers who have done this to me. You know, um, I, I I did a couple of things wrong. Um, <laughs> I have a teacher <laughs> even now. I have this with, um, and you know, she. It's we're just not nice to each other anymore. You know, it kind of mm. got to a point where. I did something wrong and she just assumed from that moment onwards that I am the worst student and I can't possibly get any better. And even though I haven't done anything wrong since then, she still treats me like that person who did something wrong once. Yeah. And that's, that's the problem bad. because now I feel like I can't redeem myself. And if I can't redeem myself, you're a sure as fuck and I guess I'm going to make her life hell. And everybody will do that. <laughs> I guarantee you everybody will do that. You might not think it, but I guarantee you, if you had a boss that treated you like shit all the time because you did something wrong once, eventually, you'll, look, you are who people think you are, and if somebody thinks you're a bag of shit, eventually you're going to turn into that person, okay? And you're going to start, you're going to, you're going to start to treat them like who they think you are. I can see that. I can see that. But it's easily fixed. Also, I mean, one of these. So, for example, if I was at school. And I also had teachers exactly like what you're saying, where they kind of treated me in a certain way because of something that had happened, but for far too long. Yeah. It's easy to fix. If this teacher then even just a single compliment on something you did well is going to give hope back to that relationship. Mm. Just one little thing that shows, actually, okay, so I've, I did something good here. And I did get good feedback for it. Even if it's a year into this negative relationship, you will have something in your mind that clicks. And then maybe next time you do your work, if the teacher does the same thing, and just is a bit like, wow, yeah, really good. I like this part. Yeah, this is really good. Then that's it. You, you've immediately just changed. You've changed. But it's very rare that those type of managers actually take that route. Mm. So, um, and... And uh, it's not down, and, and and just again using this um, schoolyard example, it's not down to the student. It's down to the teacher. You're you are setting the example here, and you're you're the one with the power. You know. Yeah. If you're the one with the power, it's your responsibility. 
Very so, true. And, and you need to be the one that goes about repairing whatever damage you've done to relation. And people might say, oh, it's just your teacher. You don't have to. No, you do. Yeah, because you if really I do. If, if I don't want to turn up to that lesson, I'm going to turn up to that lesson and I'm just going to coast through it staring at the walls. And everybody, oh, yeah, that's, that's you, the thing. Everybody will do it. Everybody will do it if that's the attitude you turn up with. But um, I, I, I love turning up to geography lessons, you know. The guy, he's entertaining. We get along well. It's uh, He's made me interested in geography. I find some years I hate subjects and then some years I love subjects. And I've noticed something. Every year I seem to go into this love-hate relationship with a with a subject, you know. Like one year I love it and the next year I hate it. I'm like... And I sit there and sometimes I think to myself, you know, why don't I just love this subject like I did anymore? Just the yeah. fuck I stood at the front. It's it's them that make you love it or hate it. That's that's actually very true. In fact, it's worse than that. If there's a subject that you're just naturally gifted at, but the teacher isn't teaching correctly, yeah, you can miss out on something. Yeah. I mean, every year when I had a teacher, parent, whatever the hell it's, a, a parent's evening is what we called it, where the parents come in, speak to the teachers, see what progress you're making, what progress you're not making, and then basically they're supposed to help you out. There was this one geography teacher who just... I don't want to say she was a bad teacher, because she wasn't. But she wasn't... She didn't make the subject fun for me. And yet yeah. every year she would tell me, you are very, very good at geography. Very good. This is something you could literally do. I, yeah. When it came to a level, she actually pulled me to one side and said, I think you should actually go for geography. But I had no interest in the subject because she wasn't the best teacher in the world. Yeah. So that could have been a missed opportunity. Yeah. And even now, I fucking hate geography. But apparently I was good at it. So it's I, the I don't know. same with chemistry for me. Um, when I started ah. out with chemistry, I was really good at it. But I just don't like my teacher. She... I mean, I've done, I've done my chemistry GCSE now. Uh, GCSE is what you do at the end of secondary school, so the end of high school or whatever for you guys. But yeah, um, you know, I've done my chemistry one. I got a B in the end. Um, I was set to get an A star at the beginning of that, and I guarantee it was just an A plus for Americans. Um, and yeah. I bet I would have got it if it wasn't for her. I just, I genuinely didn't want to turn up and. She was one of those teachers where every lesson she would go on about how she does a fifty-hour week, um, and you know and. Some teachers need to remember nowadays, most students are doing 12 to 15 different subjects. I don't just yeah. come to your lesson. I don't just go straight from bed to your lesson, then fuck off home. <laughs> you know, don't treat me like I'm doing that because I don't. I guarantee you I've got other shit to do. Yeah. And I'm sorry if I can't prioritize you over everybody else. You know, I'm sorry if you have to work a 50 hour week and have to deal with us. But guess what? <laughs> I'm doing that too. I don't get paid. True. Very true. Although. Although I I don't think any students should technically maintain that mentality. No. Because it's... if you're kind of going, hey, bitch, listen up. Just because I didn't do your homework, I had other homework to do, okay? I'm a busy man. <laughs> Fuck off. <laughs> no, just... I'm talking about when um she'll start it off by going, you know, literally, but, but she'll just walk into the class and start off with, guys, I'm not in a good mood today, so can we just be quiet the whole lesson? And <laughs> it's, it's, it's a two-hour two hour thing of science oh shit yeah, okay near silence the whole time you know it'll yeah. pretty much be silence I'm sorry but if you have to sit through and just it's impossible to be interested in it you can't bring yourself to be interested in something I have to do for 8 hours a week if I just have to sit there in silence and write no matter how good of a subject it is I, I couldn't possibly become interested in that no, of course not. It's um, unless that's what you enjoy. I mean, there are very few people who do. There are very few people, but like, there's at least one person in each class who will just smash it, no matter what the subject is. Oh yeah, because yeah. they just like smashing it. I suppose. I don't know. <laughs> they don't care what's in the lesson. They just <clears throat> want to be the best. Mm. And I respect those people, to be honest. Yeah, I think the best teachers are also entertainers. Hmm. Definitely. There has to be some kind of entertainment factor it's, there. It's Otherwise, it's just not going to work. Yeah. Okay, so have we got a happier topic, Any? I wouldn't say happier. Oh. But it, 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 mm, it's almost a would you rather, only without the second option. Well, that's so kind of bullshit. It's a what would you. Okay. 
Okay. So, have you seen what I believe is Source 6? No. Have you seen the film 7 with Brad Pitt and Morgan Freeman? Um... Is that that's animation, isn't it? No, no. Oh, you're thinking about uh, nine, I believe. Oh, <laughs> oh, that other one that's just a single <laughs> number. <laughs> yeah, no, this this one is about the seven deadly sins and a serial killer. No, who is actually, funnily enough, Kevin Spacey. No, I have not seen it. Okay, well, first of all. You need to start watching good movies. Now, not <laughs> Saw 6. I understand Saw 6. I haven't even seen Saw 6. I just saw a clip from it the other day. But Seven's a very good movie. You need to watch it. 100%. Okay. Is it on Netflix? Mm, probably not. It's it's a reasonably old one. It's it's one of the best performances I've seen from Brad, Brad Pitt ever. He's a good actor. He is. Very good actor. Very good actor. But uh, I'll, I'll give you the idea of it. Okay. So you wake up in a room. Yep. Okay. Very similar to most stories in Saw. <laughs> and the instructions are, you need to provide a pound of your own flesh onto some form of set of scales. If you do this, you live. If you don't, you die. Mm. Where do you start cutting? A pound? Of, so I'm, just, I'm just a pound in weight. So Yeah, not a pound in value. I'm I'm trying to work out what my weight is in pounds so I can work out how much this is. Because if you don't know, in the UK, we don't usually use pounds. We use stone in kilos. Yeah, Um, we don't. Uh, uh, Let me do a quick... Do you you know how many kilos there are in a pound? I want to say say it's about 2.1 kilos per pound. Well, that's a guesstimate. I'll check for it now. Uh, I should have probably checked this beforehand, but I don't know. A pound of flesh is such a common term that... I just kind of, I don't know. I didn't even think about how much it actually was. And luckily, my phone has decided to just Google stop. Google can tell you. Oh, yeah, I'm trying to get on Google. but Oh, do you want me to just ask my phone? Yes. Okay, let me just get a connection to my phone. I think, I'm, I'm pretty sure it's about 2.1 kilos per pound. Which isn't that much, is it? Well, it's not I a guess huge it's... amount. So it's, it's got to be that, about... in that respect. I'm probably around one sixty-five, one seventy pound. I think that's what that means. I think it must be around that sort of weight. So, if I was to use that scale, let's just go with that. Let's say it's one one hundred and seventieth of me. Hmm. Um. One pound is zero point four five three kilograms. Okay, so if you so basically, oh. Oh. it's half a kilogram. Yes, no, yeah, which would make sense to about two point one kilograms per. It... No, because there's not two point one kilograms in a pound. There's zero point five kilograms in a pound. Oh, sorry, yeah, I d- I went the wrong way. 0.5 kilograms. That, That's that, that makes not more sense. A lot. Sorry, that makes more sense. Um, 2.1 pounds in a kilogram. I think is what I meant to say. Yeah, yeah, but that's that's not a lot. That's not a lot. That's not a lot at all. But see, this... here's the thing, though. If I wake up in a room saying, "Put a pound of your flesh on this scale, and I'll let you live," ah, oh, man, do I really trust them? I. It's, I think it's, well, the, I think the situation calls for you knowing that's the truth. Okay. I don't know how that so, would come So the question's, about, more, the question's more, where do I cut, or do I cut, yeah. and if so, where? That's a good point, actually. In fact, it's more interesting if we say, would you cut, and <clears> if you do, where would I you I don't cut? think I would. Hmm. Because, I don't know, I don't, I don't want to play their game. But then you risk dying. Yeah, I do. You see, but it's only half a kilogram. I mean, that, that that's really not much. How much do you that's weigh? That's quite. Um. Oh shit! Let me... It's got to be like, well, I'd say between sixty and seventy for you, is it? <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you very much, but no, I'm not. I'm seventy-seven, I think. 
Oh, gee, I wasn't far off. Holy fucking You could be kidding me. You were closer to 10 off. Jesus, I was closer to oh, 80 than I am between 60 so and 70. Sorry. I'm so sorry that I don't know your exact weight. <laughs> I forgot we're in a relationship. Yeah. It's actually something else I have to search. Uh, I, I... No, I'm, I'm closer to 80 kilograms than I am 70. Um... Here we go. Okay, here we go. So one stone is 6.35 kilograms. <laughs> okay, well, I, I still think that's quite... I mean, you think about it. I mean, would my hand... I mean, I could probably cut off my left hand. That's, that's what I'm thinking. But that's not just flesh, though, is it? Or would that count, I suppose? I, I think that counts. I think I'd probably take off my left hand. But Actually, no, you, my, yeah, I, I'm taking foot. off a foot. I'm taking off a yeah, foot. Yeah, you have to take off a foot. I'm taking off a foot because I tell you what, that I'm not just... Because at first I was imagining like carving a U-shape out of my arm or something of pure yeah. flesh and muscle, but no, that's a fucked up decision. I'm not. I'm taking off my foot. That's what I was thinking. Actually, I don't, I don't know if I have to give up my whole foot either. I mean, I could probably just... Oh, I suppose you'd want to give up your whole foot, though, really, wouldn't you? It'd be easiest. Yeah, it would. You, you can't just <laughs> you can't, can't just have like half a foot. Because yeah. I, I mean, I could quite happily have a you know a false foot. In my and to yeah, to be honest, I'd probably go. I don't know. I'd probably go higher. I'd probably lose lose the shin. Really? Just just to be sure, and because it means that you can just get one of those. Uh, you know, in the um. I don't know if you've seen my feet, but I can guarantee you, one of my feet is more than one pound. I'll, I am guarantee. I would be paying in excess. Jesus, I could pay for the next guy. Yeah, because you see, the the people I watched had it completely wrong. They, they really. I mean, when I say wrong, I mean they went. They went fucking. They went creative with what they were doing. <laughs> well, they one do. guy in seven. Uh, I don't want to wait. Mm. No, it's not really spoiling it. It's it's supposed to be... Oh, shit. What was it? It was like every murder in this film is one of the seven deadly sins. And I do not remember. I, I do not remember which one. Are greed and gluttony two different things? Two different seven deadly sins? Are greed and what, sorry? Are greed and gluttony two different seven deadly sins? You're asking a guy who in the last podcast went on about how I don't understand religion and couldn't bring myself to possibly get involved with it, so no, I, I do not know. Bro, there was like a Magnum series, like the ice cream Magnum, there was Seven Deadly Sins. Everyone knows about the Seven Deadly Sins, uh, you fringe. Nope, not me. <laughs> in that case, I, I'm not sure, I don't know which of the Seven Deadly Sins this particular gentleman was, but he needed to provide a pound of flesh in order to survive, and he went for the love handles. What? He went for the love handles. He decided to cut off his love handles. And then he just bled to death, of course, because he had two big fucking holes in him. How did he exact... Um, I, how would he have gone about cutting... What? He was, he was quite a big guy. Yeah. I, he, was, he was quite large. So he just went for... I, I don't know what the, the logistics of it was, because you only really get to see the aftermath. But... Yeah, he, he, he <laughs> went for the fucking love handles. And then in Saw, it was Why even worse. Why would you cut that off? I don't know. That is understand. the last thing I would possibly want to cut off. Actually, oh, wait. Okay, okay. In Seven, it was just flesh. I remember now. It, it has was to just, just be flesh. flesh. Yeah, because they said no bone, um, oh. no something else. So, yeah, I think it was just flesh. So that's In why... which case, that makes more sense. It does make more sense, but... Uh, yeah, but... In fact, what would you even go for if it was just flesh? You'd have to go for a meaty part of your body, though, wouldn't you? Your ass. Ass cheeks, yeah. I, I... Probably take off an ass cheek. Um, yeah, that, that would suck, but I, I'd say it'd have to be. It'd have to be. Actually, um, I'm just going to fucking go on my foot again. I'm going to debone it. Like a chicken. Oh my god, that's never gonna happen. <laughs> never ever gonna happen. You can no. re you can bring yourself to do that. Uh, once I've cut my foot off, I imagine there's a very very limited time of consciousness to begin peeling your foot. Okay. I take my <laughs> you, shirt you off. You can't start deboning <laughs> your foot. That's a that's a very good point. Um, this isn't the boneless. But bite. I I just uh. 
I don't know why. I just imagine there'd be a lot more blood flow in my ass. Yeah, maybe. I don't know. I don't know. But then, then okay, I'll move on to the, what the sore people did. So there's a black lady and a white man, if I remember correctly. The black lady decided to chop her arm off, which is just a rookie error. <laughs> so they could use bone, as far as I could tell. So she cuts her arm off and puts it into this scale. Fuck it. Um, but then the, the weird thing is she keeps going. Oh, wait. Oh, yeah. Okay. Because in this situation, I think it starts, it, it's basically a competition between the two people to see who can put the most flesh into this thing. And whoever does the most gets to survive. That makes the arm make a bit more sense. Yeah. But she didn't go for the feet first. She, she went straight for the arm. The other guy, again, quite a big guy, decides to just cut his stomach off. <laughs> just, what the fuck? He is just, he retarded? I only saw That's the last part of, of the it. you don't go for anything in your torso ever. Yeah, he literally I only saw parts of it, but basically it was like flash flashing images of what he was cutting. What? And basically after about hmm, I want to say a minute of this cutting, when it flashed to his stomach, it was just his intestines and shit hanging out. <laughs> And that's what he decided to go for. That, that's the educated decision this man made. That's literally the dumbest possible thing you could... The only thing worse than that could have been if he just decided to cut the bottom half of his body off or is decapitate himself. There's literally... <laughs> <laughs> There's no other dumber option. Yeah, that's pretty... Yeah, you're right. You're right. You are right. That's I, I couldn't believe it. I was sitting there thinking, why is this chick cutting her arms off? And I was like, what, she, what fair, is She this could have just given doing? herself a vasectomy. That could have done well. She was quite. She a... was the Albert Einstein of this situation. The other guy was just lost. Yeah. He was. He was dazed. <laughs> <laughs> Who the fuck cuts their stomach out? I. It was. Do you know, so in that situation, deep. to be fair, I'm just gonna um, probably not do anything. I'd rather just die. Oh man, that sucks though. Mm, it does. Well, at least I know the other person's definitely gonna win. In fact, I mean, they could just take off their finger. Obviously, there's no way of them knowing well, they just, that. Just like brush some dandruff into the fucking scale. Exactly. <laughs> and that's it. You win. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Jesus gonna... Christ. Yeah, but I thought I'd ask that question. I thought it was interesting, and also the choices that these people were making was just fucking ridiculous to me. Wow. I want to see if you'd have any sense in that particular situation. Do you have, um, how many topics do you have left? None. Oh, snap. In that case, I have another one if you'd like to move on to it. Uh, if it's a quickish one. Why does it have to be quickish? Um, oh, wait. I rem Wait. Hold on. Why does it have to be quickish? Wasn't it 2.30 or was it 1.30? It was 1. I've had to push it back to 2. Oh, shit. Okay. It will be quick. Okay. So, the Xbox One. Okay. I think I've mentioned this before, but I'm only now realizing the seriousness of the situation. Okay. It seems like everything that was very easy to do on the Xbox 360 is now very difficult to do on the Xbox One. Is that just menu navigation and things like not that? Not only that. Not only that. If I, like, for example, I bought the season pass for Call of Duty Ghosts, right? Yeah. Downloaded it, sorted. But it's nowhere. It's nowhere. I have no idea how I activate this season pass, but oh. the new map packs came out, and the only option I have is to buy the first set of map packs for eleven pounds. That's ridiculous. There's no option to just download it since I hmm. bought the season pass. Well, if there's any one thing we know is that the Microsoft um, helpline is just no go. It just doesn't exist, basically. Mm-hmm. And then, of course, there is the menu problems where, like, for example, receiving a message while you're playing a game is just impossible to check. You can't just quickly open up the message and read it. You have to leave the game, check the message, and then return to the game. Wow. It, it, yeah, it seems like they've kind of messed up almost everything. And then the YouTube app on Xbox One, first of all, it's completely broken. Because if I go to the My Subscription section... There's nothing there. No videos whatsoever. And I'm subscribed to over 100 people, so that's ridiculous. Yeah. If I go to my uploads section, there's nothing there. Oh. I can't check my uploads. I can't check my comments. I can't do anything like that. In fact, you can't even see the comments on the videos. They, <laughs> they don't exist in this version of YouTube. Then there's the search option. There's two ways you can do a search bar. One is where 
you put everything in kind of a keyboard looking thing and then you just navigate that with your controller which isn't the easiest method in the world but it's easier than what they've decided to do here they've put all of the letters in one big long line and you have to move oh. from left to right oh actually yeah i did experience that that is um yeah that's terrible it's ridiculous. It's I like don't understand the with the voice control being as good as it is now on the new Connect, which it is pretty good. Yeah. Why can't you just say a message? Well, I don't know. Voice Why search, all I see is anything where voice, um, your voice would be helpful, like searching and stuff like that, it comes up with a message saying voice search is not available here. So, yeah. I, and the, it's just everything about this xbox one and i love the xbox one i love the games on it i, I love the way it works the netflix is pretty good uh, but it used the same search system so that's pretty sure but i like the xbox one i've always been a fan of xbox but this is just terrible it's really bad it's actually affecting me playing it i don't really like playing it that much because the community aspect is gone i tried to join a party the other day and i had no fucking idea what i was doing no idea at all. I, I still, to this day, don't know how to invite someone to a game. I don't know how to invite someone to a party. I don't know how to accept a party invite. I, I have no idea what the hell they've done. They couldn't have just kept it simple. They had to. I thought this was supposed to be easier, this mm. one. But no, it's not. I'd love to. I don't have the PS4 yet. I need to get one, and I need to see what it's like. Because it may yeah. have just passed the Xbox in ease of access. It may have. Which would be reverse of the last uh, generation. Exactly. That is different. unusual. And um, so my experience with the Xbox One was it doesn't seem to have quite as much as an online community as the 360. Yeah. Um, so on the 360, you know, you get online, you join a party, you play a game. And the Xbox One, it doesn't just seem to be that easy. Um, you know, we had two Xbox Ones in the house in different rooms. So we were trying to play each other. <laughs> now... Just on a racing game, we, it took us probably about 40 minutes to get each other into the same game. That's what I mean. Not and connection you're in the same issues. fucking just, house. Exactly, not connection issues. It wasn't that. We connected to the same bloody router. It was just a case of, where is invite? Okay, there's the invite. Why can't I invite them? Because they're not on this game's friends list. Okay, well, why has this game got its own friends list? Why can't I just use my normal one? Yeah, okay, that so you come out of that, too. and then you go to this, and then... You invite them to the game, and it, it, you just click a button, and then it goes back. And you're like, oh, did you send it? On the 360, it's like it's like invite sent. It doesn't seem to say that. It doesn't tell me. It just I click on it, and I just have to assume it's happened. Yeah. And then it sends it, and then they have to click join, and then it, ah. They have to they, no. They have to calculate how they accept that invite. It's so weird. It's so difficult. I don't understand how they possibly thought it was a good idea. It might yeah, just be that I'm not used to the console. And Maybe. when I learn how to do this stuff, it's going to be like second nature and it'll be easy. But it's not at the moment. No. I, I've literally actively looked for a way to invite people to stuff. And I can't find it. Every tab I check and I can't find it. Yeah. Someone help me out. Anyone who has an Xbox One, just tell me how to do all the easy shit. Like inviting people to parties, joining games, inviting people to games. Just any of that. And I'll be happy. <laughs> Even sending someone a message that you're not friends with is near impossible. Yeah. It's, I don't even know how to find people. Friends yeah, list, I, you go I, through I this weird whole square boxy thing. And there's, and there's, and, uh, I don't know. What you have to do, this is how little sense it makes. In order to send a message to someone you're not friends with, you have to go to the Add Friends tab. Then, when you're in the Add Friends tab, you can actually look for people without adding them as a friend. And then you can send them a message through the Add Friends tab. But that doesn't make any sense, because you don't necessarily want to add everyone you send messages to. Oh yeah, you can't send a message unless you're on their friends list. I don't know if that's that the case. I'd, because I've I sent think... messages and received messages from people in Call of Duty lobbies, like hate messages and shit like that, still. Oh. Oh, you but still you do have to go to the ad. You have to do the first stages of adding a friend to actually just just send someone a message. Huh. It's, it's almost the same level as this YouTube thing, where to check your messages, you have to go to Video Manager and then to your inbox. <sighs> it just doesn't make any sense. 
It doesn't make any sense at all. And when they sat down and decided, hey, if someone wants to send someone a message, we'll make them click add friend. Why did that get through? Yeah, that's just complicating things that don't need to be complicated. It is. And I need help. Oh, well. I can't function on this console at the moment. Ah, <sighs> that is annoying. For example, you you were you had access to an Xbox One, and then yeah. before you left, I thought, yeah, we'll do this easy. And then I tried to play with one of my friends, and I realized this is not happening. This is just yeah. not. I'm I'm never gonna get to play with James. It's not possible. Mm. I I genuinely, me and um, Cameron were online at the same time, and he was on his Xbox One, and I was on one out there, and we couldn't connect because I was on a different account, obviously. And going about finding him, and then adding him, and then getting in the same game was just such a long process. I got tired. <laughs> and I fucked off. <laughs> I got tired. I, I, I just, I rage quit. I rage I quit. I rage quit the Xbox One. I wow. rage quit the Xbox One guide. I'm sorry, but that shouldn't be a thing. Definitely not. But um, yeah, I think we're going to have to wrap things up about there. Yes, we are. James has think, some business he uh, needs this to attend to. This has been about two hours, six minutes ish around there. I think, I think it's around that. Around that. Around that. Okay. Well, guys, thank you very much for sticking around for episode 14. Yes, 14. 14. <laughs> okay. <laughs> 14 has... Uh, I've liked this episode, actually. We've gone through uh, a bunch of really quite odd stuff. You know, what part of your body would you remove in a sore situation? Scottish yeah. independence. Would you rather eating eat cow food? shit? It's, I'm sorry, but I'm, I'm still not on board with oh, you there. But... Oh, I... Fuck you. Guys, please just comment below what you would rather do out of yep. those would you rather. Because uh, to me, James just seems crazy. He just seems <laughs> completely crazy. So just let us know. Um, yeah. Yeah, I guess, yeah, that was episode 14. So thanks, guys, for watching. You're always amazing. All of you are. Um, we do hope you enjoyed it. I've, I've had fun, Mr. James. Have you had fun? I've always had fun. Awesome. In that case, uh, yeah, I guess we'll be seeing you next Saturday with episode 15 of Podcast X in series two. So that's uh, just as complicated as the Xbox One. Cool. <laughs>